Thank you so much for letting me speak here. This is really exciting. I gotta say, I feel like that one day back in school when I got to finally hang with the cool kids <laughs> was the, the best day of my life. Um, I wanna share two stories with you that I suppose are about innovation. So I'm a workaholic, and I hated that talk about work-life balance <laughs> earlier. Okay. And I'm a workaholic. And I'm kind of hooked on the idea of trying to do something new and different and maybe even have uh, an impact on the world that way. And I could talk for hours, I often do in fact, about uh, my previous project, which was a sort of first exception to the rule that most things I do go absolutely nowhere. Um, I could talk for hours about the roller coaster that we were riding when we got that build, how we started building a prototype on a shoestring budget, and then we almost raised money to build a real company, and then that totally, totally failed. But then Google got interested, and they bought the prototype when it turned into Google Maps, and it was really an exciting ride. But there's a different story I want to share with you today, which is about a team of Google engineers in India, and how, in my opinion, they really changed the world with their contribution. Uh, to Google Maps, and then if I'm not out of time, I'm going to tell, tell you about a different roller coaster ride that I'm having right now with Google Maps, as he was pointing out. So, excuse me, Google Wave. So here's Google Maps. Really quickly, show of hands, has anyone ever used Google Maps? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm suddenly a lot less nervous. That's not true. <laughs> But thank you, just the same. So as you can see, we have pretty good, good coverage uh, of maps all around the world. It wasn't always like this. Yeah, so this is Google Maps year 2005 after we launched. As you can see, we only have North America, the United Kingdom. We carefully placed them in the exact right spot. And then we painted everything else blue um, <laughs> as a promise of maps to come. We got a lot of fun emails about this. So this was two months after George Bush had been elected to his second term. <laughs> And quite a lot of people thought we were trying to predict what the world would look like four years later. <laughs> entirely, entirely not true. One of my favorite emails ever, this guy in all caps, you forgot Poland. <laughs> and so, and so, and so here's the map of Poland. We, we now have Poland. Um, so how do we do, how do we add another country to Google Maps? So if it's a so-called developed country, you can typically find several providers of digital map databases, we go evaluate them, we find the best one, we license their maps, we run it through a bunch of software. We have it, it's actually not that easy. <laughs> but the real problem is that most countries in the world don't have, or at least didn't have back then, digital maps databases. And India was an example of that. And um, when maps look like I just showed you, these two uh, super smart guys, Alid and Sanjay from our Bangalore office, they wrote to me and they said, Lars, we'd love to put India on Google Maps, how do we do it? I said, well, go find the database, the license. They came back three weeks later and said, you know, there is none. We're there only the major cities are maps. The quality is really poor. And I said, why don't we build these guys a thing on top of Google Maps where volunteers could go and input maps. It's like Wikipedia for maps, right? I love the idea. I said, more power to you. Please, please do it. What can I do to help? And I went back to India. And a year and a half of hard work later, not much had come out of it. Because I think you know, the distance, the communication problems, I also think Google Maps was really not quite ready um, to have something that complex built on top of it. And by then, I was a big bad manager. I actually traveled to India, stood in front of these two guys and said, OK, stop, enough, enough. Too much distraction. You're not getting anywhere. Go work on something else. I don't want to hear another word. And they say, OK, sure, fine, whatever. <laughs> And to their credit, they kept at it. <laughs> and a few, uh, sometime later, I forget exactly when they, they launched this amazing tool, which does exactly what they said it was going to do. So this is Google MapMaker. Um, in 160 countries, volunteers are inputting maps all over the world. And if you go look at Google Maps, you'll see India is now actually very well mapped. Um, here's a really cool time lapse that shows this is a small town in Peru. And this video here takes place in the course of 11 months of volunteers just happily, busily mapping away this town here. And so I think these guys truly, really changed the world. Here's, um, here's a place in, uh, in Haiti when that horribly devastating earthquake hit Haiti back in January. There were no online maps of 
AD anywhere. And so I think literally a thousand volunteers used Google Map Maker to quickly map out um, Haiti, and you can see actually, this is some small town in the eastern part of the country, and you can see how detailed these maps are. It goes even better in the, in the capital, and you'll see this is, this is in Haiti. And so these, these are the sort of things. I'm pretty far removed from this, but I'm really quite proud to have been involved in that sort of thing. To be honest, I got into maps because I have no sense of direction. <laughs> you know, I, got, I get lost in my own house, and it's not a big house. <laughs> Um, but it turned out maps are actually very important, well, for a lot of things, but when disaster strikes, it's really good to have a map. We learned that the first time back in it was 2005, that horrific Hurricane Katrina flooded New Orleans, and uh, the U.S. government very quickly took satellite images of the area so that you could see where the flooding was, but they didn't really have a place to get it out to people, and so they asked us, um, and we scrambled to put the maps out there. I couldn't find a picture of it, but I think it was, it was very useful in, these, in, in, the, uh, in the relief efforts back then. Um, same with uh, the Boxing Day tsunami a few years ago. We were actually better. There's actually a team at Google, uh, as part of the Google Maps team, that specializes in being ready for this sort of thing. Um, the, 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 the bushfires down, down south a few years ago, some people went on, on Google Maps and mapped out where all the fires were so that people knew where they could go and not go. I found, I checked and, and so I don't work on maps anymore, but here's a, here's a map you can find right now that's tracking those horrific, horrible oral leaks in the Gulf of Mexico. And so, so that's maps. Like I said, I'm profoundly proud of these, these sort of things and maybe, just maybe that work-life balance thing is okay after all. But um, enough about maps. Excuse me. Um, I promised you a roller coaster story. What was the question? Is Google Wave really going to be the next big thing? Uh, indeed. So uh, we launched Google Wave finally to the public just a few days ago in San Francisco. It's not really important what Google Wave is. If you don't know, I'll give you just a little bit of context. Um, so Google Wave is about uh, getting work done. And here's a Here's a subset of the email threads that I exchanged with the TEDx organizers to get me to come here today. Um, there's a lot more of them. Um, I think everyone here uses email as a, as a key tool in their work, right? These threads here, when I, when I look through them, there's a lot of them, and they all have sort of different people involved, and there's a good deal of confusion, even though we're, you know, obviously everyone is super smart here, but it's hard to keep track of who's seen what. Questions get asked many times over, and then when I came back here this morning, I needed a bunch of information, you know, where to, where to show up, what time, how to register, what's the phone number of the organizer, when am I talking, when am I getting interviewed, is there a party tonight? <laughs> you know, the, all that important stuff, and to get that out of here, I had to kind of read through at least half of those threads to find just the right messages that had that information and then make sure that no one had sent a subsequent email that contradicted that. And that's how email works. You know, we're all used to this. I think most people just kind of shrug it and you know, that's, it's been like this for decades, right? And Google Wave, we think we can do better. <laughs> Call us crazy. We get called crazy a lot. We think we can do better. I don't want to talk too much about what it is, um, but, but we, think, uh, we think these sorts of problems happen because email was invented more than 40 years ago, and it essentially just mimics paper mail. And we think the problems like this happen because email these conversations here are made up of individual messages with different people on them, and everyone has their own copy, so you can't change anything once you send it. And so in Wave, we try, instead of having a conversation just be a single object, lives in a single place, everyone shares it, everyone can see the same thing, and we try to construct it so that that list of pertinent information, so the product of the work in these conversations here can actually be constructed between all of the people at the same time while you're having the conversation. If you're not confused yet, then I haven't done my job. So I'm not really here to promote Google Wave, but if you, you, know, you can go use your favorite search engine, wink, wink, um, and you can find out what it was. I promised you a roller coaster story. So Google Wave um, is no longer um, actually, I wanted to just, I forgot this is my favorite favorite image I was going to show you this when I was going to praise my Indian colleagues about how they had persevered. <laughs> Imagine I, you know, anyway. The, um, 
The um, Google Wave is no longer just a Google product, project. So we have like German SAP, American Novells, several open source organizations and a few startups are all getting involved in trying to solve this problem. And we wanted that to happen from the beginning. And because of that, we, we, we showed what we were working on long before we were done. Actually, almost exactly a year ago, we gave this 80 minute demo, highly choreographed. I rehearsed it for a year. Um, in a big conference in San Francisco, and it was really well received. There was about 4,000 people in the room. They actually gave us a standing ovation. A beautiful woman in white, in white is my wife, she's sitting up there. Um, and, and the press afterward was phenomenal. We put the demo on YouTube, it's gotten nine million hits, which is crazy. That here's a few examples of the press. Google Wave drips with ambition. Here's another tech press, you can't read it, but it says that Wave represents a profound advance in the state of the art. Even the mainstream press, here's CNN calling me a genius and showing how cute we were when we were kids. <laughs> Does it get any better? This is, uh, this is Time Magazine, my favorite headline of all time, Wave New World. We asked if anyone wanted to try it, about six million people asked to, to get a shot when we at some point in the future launched it, um, which we did sort of nervously um, six months ago. It was still really quite, um, quite flaky. We called it a preview, and we let the first million or so people in, and they just loved it. It was the best time ever. Um, and we felt sort of like this, like rock stars. In the seventh heaven, you can see from the shape of that roller coaster what's going to happen next. Indeed, so this is actually not an uncommon thing I know now. So typically new, t new technologies, this is a concept that gets studied a lot, so new technologies are often met with a lot of excitement. Um, some call it even hype over expectation and so on. And then when you put it in the hands of people, it gets met with, met with an equal amount of disappointment, typically because, well, no one really knows what to do with it. It's new after all. It's typically immature and so on. And then you go through this, thing beautifully called the trough of disillusionment until if you do your work right, then things go well again. And that's exactly what happened <laughs> in a big way. Like, so we, in November, December, we invited the next five million people and they just totally had no idea what to do or how to, so they were not into new technology. There was this new meme on the internet, Google Wave, and now what? Uh, a not so favorite headline of mine, Google Wave crashes on the beach of overhype. <laughs> uh, and and by, the end of the, by the end of the year, we appeared in equal measures on most promising and most disappointing technology list of 2009. In January and February, hit rock bottom. Even those early adopters who had loved it started leaving, I think because they couldn't really get their friends um, to use it just yet. And so I wish, you know, I am no spring chicken anymore. I wish I could tell you that I'm used to this sort of thing and it's fine, but it, well, it was kind of painful actually. You know, maybe I should read that book about life or balance. <laughs> the good news is you know, that we kept at it. We've been working much harder than that book would recommend and little by little, <laughs> little by little, those, you know, the hecklers are, maybe they're just getting tired of heckling, but little by little we're hearing more and more stories of people actually using Google Wave. And so maybe there is hope in the spirit of this conference, I want to call out a few things that I was very happy happened. So when, again, that horribly devastating earthquake hit in Haiti, a bunch of people used Wave to coordinate um, their relief efforts in, in Haiti, which was, I thought a fantastic thing. Um, uh, at some point, there was an organization called DebateWise that had a thousand young people from 130 countries debate the climate summit, the climate change summit in Copenhagen in Wave, and they liked it a lot. Um, and then, just a few uh, weeks ago, we saw this blog where a fifth-grade teacher had her kids get on Wave um, and do all their class research in Wave, and she said those magic words: "The kids thought it was cool." And so that's when we decided to launch it to everyone. I have no idea what's gonna happen. And when I look tired, it's because, well, you can imagine. So I don't actually know exactly what ideas that might be worth sharing here, um, but I do wanna just end up with that favored picture of mine. And thank you so much for your attention.